What's up you guys, David here once again for another video review and today we're in Box U 5's EcoBoost Mustang. But it's not just any EcoBoost Mustang, it's a big turbo EcoBoost Mustang. I have been dying to drive one of these ever since I saw that the kit was released and I was like, I wonder if that will make a big difference for the EcoBoost Mustang. Now, I'm sure you're going, well of course it'll make a difference, but why did I question that? Well, because the tiny little turbo on the on the EcoBoost actually gave it kind of a character of low wind punchy torque and it hit really hard, but it would fall on its face at the very top of the RPM range. So that was a little bit of an issue with me with the EcoBoost at first, but then Basu was like, you know what? I'm gonna go for it and rice out an EcoBoost Mustang since the EcoBoost Mustang unfortunately gets a lot of hate because of it being a four cylinder. But I'm here to tell you to give it a chance because the first one I ever drove made over 400 foot pounds of torque. This one also makes over 400 foot pounds of torque, but this makes way more horsepower. This one makes basically 380 wheel horsepower and dude, does it shine. And the greatest thing about the EcoBoost Mustang is the lighter nose. If you want a better handling car, if you want more of an autocross car, you still want a Mustang, get the EcoBoost, I'm telling you. If you want more of like a long speed track car, if that's your mindset, Coyote would be a good choice also. If you're doing tight turns and all that good stuff, EcoBoost for the win, seriously. Plus, if you were like, oh, but what about the V6? Sorry, dude, they're getting rid of the V6. They are finally ditching it. I just recently drove a twin turbo V6 and that was a great car, but this actually delivers power way different because it's a four cylinder. You'd think it wouldn't be that torquey, but for some reason when Americans build a four cylinder, they always make them extremely torquey, but less horsepower. A lot of the other times when it's Japanese or et cetera, it's horsepower and no torque. So it's kind of an interesting sensation when you get on it. a lot better. This actually has a 76 millimeter turbo on it now, which is something that you'd find on a Toyota Supra or something sometimes. So this thing is no joke. The kit was put on by my friends over at Evolve Tuning. They do all the work to my 240s and stuff of that nature. So make sure to give them some love in the description below too. They also have an injector company and they do the injectors. So let's talk about the looks of this car. Out of all the S550s I've done, I loved George's or Nemesis's, but I also love this one. But the great thing is, is that they're completely different. The motor and the looks and everything, they use different body. This has a GT350 front with a grill delete so you can see the big fat intercooler up front. Another thing too is the APR arrow on the back and it looks so good with the carbon deck lid, the carbon louvers, the nice hood scoop up front everything comes together, and of course, the gold wheels. I love these wheels to death. The first time I saw this car, my jaw dropped because it just has such a nice presence when it's rolling down the road. And there's so many people that see this car on Instagram, and they're like, that's an EcoBoost? Because everyone's like, but you know, Coyote all the way. But he actually had a 16 GT, and he was like, you know what, I'm gonna change it up. And so, his goal of making a riced out Mustang ironically backfired because everybody loves it. Because he has the he has the Japanese writing on the window, he has the Japanese plate, all that good stuff. But the sound this thing makes is awesome. All right. Oh yeah. Definitely doesn't fall in its face. It's the complete opposite. So you had a lot of low end torque with the tiny little turbo, no power up top. This spools up and builds the power. It's a way different mindset. So that was all the way in at around the corner. Was never upset. That was straight like Miata. That's what it felt like in a much bigger car. Yep. Easy peasy. The transmission in this car is a six speed. And if you think EcoBoost gets good gas mileage with a big turbo on it, you'd be wrong. It's not a thing. It gets pretty much the same gas mileage as a supercharged Coyote. So 
Yeah. But Adam Tune Plus tuned the car, and he's really famous for doing EcoBoost engines, including the Fiesta, etc. Then he also does the Mustangs. And this kind of opened up a whole new market for Mustang because, you know, now there's Cobb and Access Port and all those guys are involved now, which is weird because you're used to seeing them with Subaru and things of that nature. And then you see like an Access Port and a Mustang, you're like, oh, that's, that's different. That's weird. Another thing too is the shifter on this car feels phenomenal. It's a short shifter. And what I love about the S550 is that it's just a nice place to be. You go into the S197 cars, which are still great cars overall and they're fun, but the interior in here is so much more comfortable. I love how the freaking speedometer says ground speed for whatever reason. But the steering wheel feels nicer. So the door panels have this nice red here. And also, these seats are incredible. These are like the comfiest racing seats I've ever been in. Let's talk about the suspension. Probably the most money invested in this car is the suspension. And that is because he went with BC Racing. And BC Racing coils are some of the best in the business. And he was telling me he tinkered for about six weeks to get the settings right on these BCs. And now he's just saying, this is it. I'm never changing it again. And I'm like, I wonder what that's gonna be like. And when I'm driving this car, I've never driven in a smoother Mustang, ever. Like, I've been in a lot of them. This is the smoothest one, without a doubt. It's, it's so cool to feel a car that has quick turn in, and it's just super easy with the lighter nose. Oh, we're gonna do a 40, see what happens. And boost. Oh yeah, there it is. It sounds like a jet. <laughs> it's so funny when you get into boost. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have the same punch as like say a Coyote or something, but when it comes to balance, it's much more controllable overall. You don't, you don't spin at all, and this car's using Chinese tires. <laughs> so I guess you could say that's the only riced out thing he has on this car, really. Right around. Has a little bit of camber. Oh, there's my bag. Brakes, oh, brakes are great. Yep, and out. And we're good, we're good. Wow. bunch of room back there but as you heard my bag was flying everywhere <laughs> so you, will you make the power numbers that you expect if you're going through the crazy numbers like five or six hundred not really you're probably gonna have to revamp your fuel, fuel system there are people out there making basically 600 horsepower in these engines but they did have to convert you do the direct injection and the port injection so it's kind of a weird it's like a weird dance between them it's weird seeing a horse right here as I accelerate and get a four-cylinder sound Woo! All right. That's a good pony. <laughs> I love the color scheme of this vehicle because even when you pop the hood, there's gold like wrapped around and there's gold on the wheels. And then people who never liked the EcoBoost will see his car and be like, you know what? I think I have to admit I like that car because it's just so different and thinks right outside the box. Most people go with silver or charcoal. I can't really say anything. I do the same thing but he went crazy with the gold. And I love how aggressive the front of this looks because he has the different colored headlights and stuff like that when he's rolling down the road too. So all comes together. He did not cut any corners on this car and that's great to see. It's in stock form though or nothing to like blink your eye at. I mean, they're still pretty fun cars without a doubt. But yeah, this is a completely different car with a bigger turbo on it. Like the way it acts, the way it drives, the way it distributes the power, it's just, it's very different. It's hard to describe. It feels like almost, you know what? I'll go out there and say it. It kind of feels like a more modern SR20. Yeah, SR20 has that kind of weight, weight, weight spool factor and then you keep going. And that's kind of like this too. So the exhaust in this car is MBRP race, but it sounds really good when you're in the throttle, but when you go into it and let off, you get drone. You get drone, but it's, okay, yeah, you get drone. You get. You get a good a bit of drone, but if drone is not something you mind, then there you go. All right, you guys, I hope you all enjoyed a big turbo EcoBoost Mustang. It was a very different, very intriguing car. It's unlike almost anything I've ever driven. It was like a cool kind of R&D exercise with this car because this car hadn't really been pushed that hard. At the end of the day, it was a great experience and I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time and take it easy. Have a fantastic day. Bye.